arrangements and your stomach is full so we we'll talk talk about how to do how to deal with the full stomach uh, as uh, today the topic given to me is energy efficiency and controls uh, very frankly now in today's presentations by the, our president dhananjay mr pranikar and mr dr ashish kadam very little has been left for me to talk because then i just inform you about why uh, you have to use ammonia to give you the maximum energy efficiency uh, gulani ka sir explain how to design your plant using standard for again maximum energy efficiency and dr kadam told you about what effects can oil make on your plant and how does removing oil can make your plant more efficient so hardly anything left for me to talk but i will try to share what experiences i have uh, last years in this industry as we talk about energy efficiency or efficiency basically it comes to the uh, objective why we want to have an uh, ammon refrigeration plant itself why we need a refrigeration plant because everybody talks about energy efficiency it means saving energy in refrigeration plant but why we need a refrigeration plant So if you look at this, we need a refrigeration plant when we want to achieve temperatures which are below ambient conditions or which cannot be achieved using standard evaporative practices like evaporative water cooling, evaporation by water or other thing. When we want to go to the lower temperatures and particularly below comfort zone, then we need a refrigeration. We need refrigeration for food preservation, food storage. For Processing, manufacturing, beverages, beverage industry, many, many, many applications. When your pharmaceuticals, you need a very ultra low temperatures, maybe up to minus seventy for certain products. There we need refrigeration. And when we talk about energy efficiency or efficiency in a refrigeration plant, what actually we mean is that achieving same temperature at lesser time and at a better, uh, lesser consumption of energy. Energy efficiency cannot be achieved by increasing the running hours of the plant or by uh, having more energy or power consumption. This this has become popular in India in last 10 to 15 years when power cost has shot up. I remember in my somewhere in around 95 to 2000, people used to say what is energy efficiency? Our power cost is two rupees twenty paisa. What difference it makes by saving energy? We don't need it. But now, when you are talking about eight rupees, nine rupees for the same power, and cost of your product or production is directly linked to the electrical energy, then you need to look at the energy efficiency. So, how I can achieve energy efficiency? I always say the best way of energy efficiency is shut it off. <laughs> you you don't need to run it. If you don't need to run it, you shut it off. Then that is saves your energy. If you are designing a plant, having a one very big compressor and running it part load by using some mechanical devices or the variable frequency drives and everything, instead of that, have two different compressors. If your load requirement is less, shut up one compressor. That saves maximum energy. No automation saves energy than shutting off the plant. So that that's always the first principle you should look when you are talking about energy efficiency. Now this chart shows you typical how much energy is consumed in a refrigeration plant uh, on different applications. So if you look at a typical cold storage, you need 90% of your energy is in the refrigeration plant, or that is for an ice cream plant or a dairy plant can be around 70 to 80 to 30%. So the more you save in the refrigeration plant, it directly saves in your overall plant efficiency. Or overall plant performance, and then this adds net profit. If I am having a freeze freezing, a freeze freezing plant, and my refrigeration plant is the major contributor, I am able to save ten percent. My profit increases maybe thirty or forty percent more. So that's why we have to look at into the efficiency or the energy efficiency to the refrigeration plants. So uh, when you say energy efficiency. It can be achieved in two ways, as Gurani Kapur said, as explained you in the morning, by using AR standard, where you design the plant for energy efficiency. Right from day one, you can design a plant which will give you maximum or optimized performance of your requirement. Oversizing equipment, oversizing pipe sizes, or oversizing compressors does not save energy. 
Anybody who says that I'm putting up a very big plant and my requirements are less does not save the energy. In fact, he consumes more energy. And then second thing is that use of a very good quality of control system. Control system gives you an excellent energy saving. Typically, if you look at a, say, a, a, a chilling plant, very chilling plant, if your plant is not atomized and compressor is running without looking at the suction pressure and it keeps on running maybe lesser than the desired pressure, then you are losing the energy. But if you are loading and unloading the compressor and maintaining a constant suction pressure required for your required temperatures, then you save a lot of energy. So this is one way when you are designing a plant, you consider what are the requirements of your plant, how the plant is going to operate. 365 days, what happens in winter conditions, like in particularly northern part of India, we have very low ambient temperatures and in uh, uh, summer conditions also high temperatures. So you can have a plant designed in a way such as that you have multi-function, multi-requirement or seafood plant. Sometimes it depends on the availability of the catch or availability of the seafood material. So your plant does not run 365 days on full load capacity. It may run 6 to 8 months on full load capacity. And in next next 2 to 3 months it may be running 60-70%. So you can select or design equipments in such a way that your ability to either say shut off. Shut off the compressor, shut off the central plant area and serve energy. If you look at a dairy plant typically, it almost works continuously for 365 days. So design of a dairy plant much much varies from the seafood plant or a food processing plant, you have a peace processing plant maybe running for 3 or 4 months and then another 2 months for the mango based on the 6 months they are running only the cold storage so all these aspects must be considered and studied when you are doing the uh, energy uh, designing the plant another, is, another approach for the same thing is you use automatic controls, automation systems in such a way that you improve your existing plant efficiency. It is said that a good quality of automation plant saves or makes a moderately designed plant perform better. But bad quality of automation, selection and design makes this uh, ammonia uh, refrigeration plant uh, uh, perform uh, badly if you do not have a proper automation system even though the plant design is good. So we, we need to look at, into this automation part that is where I am going to talk today about. Like I said you need automation and controls to work. Here also we need to see how this light works, light changer works. So this is the definition by Ashley that uh, automation is nothing but use of use of actuators and equipments to achieve a safe performance without affecting your pain. So in a typical refrigeration plant, which are the items or the parameters we need to look at and have a control or monitor? First is of course temperature, because it is based on the temperature that we uh, plant is designed to achieve temperature, temperatures which are not normally possible in ambient conditions. Next is the, because we are talking about specifically ammonia refrigeration system, it is availability of refrigerant in your evaporators. How maximum uh, evaporator is flooded, you get better efficiencies. Of course pressure, because temperature and pressure are totally linked to each other, that's what our refrigeration system is. Then in certain applications like a potato cold storage, you need to monitor carbon dioxide or in apple cold storage, you need to monitor ethylene emission from the products or relative humidity for storing of those uh, products like grapes, you need 95% uh, humidity or uh, onions, you may need 55 to 60% humidity. So depending on the product store, you need to look at those parameters also. So we will look at into this uh, aspects how these items can be achieved. For please please uh, uh, remember that when you want to uh, talking about ammonia as a refrigerant, ammonia is an as Dhananjaya uh, inspired in the morning. Ammonia we are using for refrigerant has to be a nitrous ammonia. It has to have a 99.95 percent purity. 
Such a pure ammonia only will give you the desired temperature pressure charts which I am referring to. Our whole refrigeration system is designed based on these charts. So if you want to achieve these temperatures, want to achieve these parameters, your ammonia has to be a pure ammonia. If your vendor is providing uh, ammonia, you always ask for a purity certificate. If not, you should check it at your level. Like Dr. Kadam told us about talking about checking the oil uh, periodically. You should check ammonia purity on your uh, operation levels. So what the optimization or how do I achieve that? One is of course my initial cost or we call it as the capex. Another is my maintenance cost which we call as the opex. Reduce that. And then very simple, increase efficiency. Very simple says that increase efficiency. How you say you don't know, but you increase efficiency you save. And of course when you are having particularly food products or food, make sure that your plant is designed in such a way or it is optimal in such a way that food quality, food safety is, is well maintained and it is uh, whatever the standards, procedures are required or whatever the certifications are required, food are maintained by using correct refrigeration. Stopping in the potato will damage potato at the end of the season when you are removing and then there will be heavy loss. Or same thing if there is a butter is stored in a cold storage and there is a leakage of refrigerant into that, the whole butter will get damaged. So such a thing should be avoided by having a correct uh, refrigeration plant. And of course, transit to climate friendly natural refrigerant which gives you highest efficiency which is about, uh, which I say I always talk about ammonia. Go to ammonia and save energy and uh, improve your plant performance. So how do I achieve that? How do I achieve is that operate on the lowest condensing pressure, automatically con uh, control condensing pressure, pro have a protein control on condensing pressure depending on wet bulb temperature, ambient temperature. Try to raise your suction pressure, maximize, operate on maximum suction pressure as I have shown you that in the pressure temperature chart. So operate on the rated conditions. Suppose in the cold storage you want to maintain 2 degrees centigrade, your system is designed for minus 3, you operate it at minus 3, don't operate it at minus 10. That saves you a lot of energy. Then raise your, if you have a multi stage system, make sure that intermediate pressure is operating at desired condition. If your intermediate is at minus 5, make sure you are operating at it minus 5 intermediate. And of course, if you are using overfit system, pump system, which has become very popular in India, always use ammonia pumps instead of using uh, or gas, uh, or gas circulated, discharge gas circulated uh, pumping system. It's not very popular, but it was very popular in particularly countries like US, where hot gas is being injected into a tank, where the pressure of the ammonia is raised, and then that ammonia is circulated. But it creates flash gases and also uh, it saves on pump, but it creates other effects and overall efficiency is reduced by 5%. So if we are able to do all these things, then we save a lot of energy. A lot of energy by running the plants, plants in this fashion, we, we save a lot. Then, of course, the next stage, when you are operating plant at the most moderate or the design conditions, try to recover the heat. Recover the heat from your waste heat of your condenser, there is a super heat available which can be recovered 50 to 20 percent. There is a possibility if you are having air changes in the cold storages, you are taking the cold air out, you can pinch in the fresh air coming in. Like, like those things can be used. Use highest efficiency motors. Now, the very high efficient motors are available. Go with those highest efficient motors. Go with automatic power factor control systems. Make sure that power factor control is maintained. You get rebates also on that. Use a hot gas defrosting system. Preferably instead of wasting water or electricity, you always go for hot gas because hot gas is available free in your system. You can use it to defrost the evaporators. Use maximum possible automation like automation on your compressor side, condenser sides. In northern India particularly, you can use hybrid condensers where uh, ambient temperatures are low, you can shut off the water consumption, just run it as an air cooled condenser. Such condensers are also available now. And keep on maintaining your plant regularly. 
do not wait for the failure of a plan. If you do uh, what we call as the stitching time saves nine, so always keep, keep your plants maintained, motors lubricated, change oil whenever required, oil filters, we have talked a lot about oil in the morning, so use good quality of the oil, keep it replacing or filtering whatever is required. So you keep maintenance as much as possible and you will save a lot. So this is how all we achieve and do we save a lot of energy. So I'm now I will go briefly through the various pipes or pumps or controls which we you can use for uh, automation part. The refrigeration systems, we have three types of systems very popular. One is the direct expansion system, another is the gravity field system and third one is the liquid overfit system. We will try to see what are the controls are used into these uh, systems. Earlier direct expansion systems were very popular in ammonia. Later on they become uh, discontinued almost. And they are mainly used in now those uh, synthetic refrigerant systems. Its main problem was that the uh, use of a thermostatic expansion valve which was uh, operating on a 5 or 6 degree super heat, which was which was causing to use bigger area of the evaporator efficiency of the plant was less. Secondly, as ammonia and oil, oil is not visible in ammonia, ammonia oil carry were happening into the expansion wall, used to choke the expansion walls and the performance of expansion walls used to uh, fail uh, drastically. So uh, this DX system become uh, totally uh, like it's phased out into the system. But now it has again come back, particularly when you want to have a smaller evaporators or a smaller systems operating at different temperature. A DX system with a motorized expansion walls and electronic control is again popular. You can operate it instead of 5 or 6 degree, you can operate using 2 or 3 degree uh, super heat. But uh, advantage is that because these are motorized walls, even though the oil comes in the wall, the oil does not choke the performance of the wall. The disadvantage of this system is that you need larger evaporator area before the separation of the liquid and the gas. And secondly is that if you are having multiple chambers, multiple evaporator systems, then uh, if you go for a common compressor system, then you may have to have a uh, very big uh, dry suction line, which will cause uh, your pressure drops or which will add to the, your power consumption. So you need to select correctly when you want to operate power. Your requirements is to be defined correctly. Next part is what we call as the gravity bed system. In a typical gravity field system, liquid is circulated from receiver, high pressure receiver to individual evaporators by the pressure difference. The high pressure difference goes to the evaporator. So in this, it is most critical in this system to get energy efficiency is to maintain constant liquid feeding into the evaporator. The more and more the liquid is flooded into the evaporator, you will have the highest energy efficiency. And that's why to avoid liquid coming back to the system, we always use the accumulator or what we call as the suction, suction accumulator or the uh, accumulator as the word is used or the liquid separator. Job of this liquid separator is to separate between gas and liquid. Liquid gets fitted continuously into the evaporator and then your uh, gas goes to the compressor. So using level control is the most important thing. Level control can be level control and solenoid wall or an electronic transmitter and the motorized wall. It what advantages gives is I said for energy efficiency it avoids uh, it makes sure that evaporator is hundred percent flooded and it avoids liquid coming to the compressor because we all know the compressors are the gas compressors we do not compress liquid liquid is not compressible fluid so if liquid comes to the compressor compressor damage possibility is there. So we want to avoid liquid coming to the compressor and then as more and more we have the liquid flooded into the system, we have uh, more heat, uh, heat transfer efficiency from the evaporator and also less wear tear of the compressor because we do not have, we do not have any liquid coming to the compressor, damages of the compressor are avoided. These are typical uh, level controllers we have available, maybe a switch type or the level transmitters. We, we have a level transmitters, probe type of the uh, wire types, the float switches, electronic ones, solenoid walls, different types we have, uh, depending on the requirements. 
the filters are normally filters are required to be used along with the solenoid wall because the gap between the solenoid wall piston or diaphragm and the body is very less so you need to make sure and also the expansion wall and expansion wall choking probability is there so you need to use the correct quality of the filters filter sizes can be dependent on your application location wise of the filter you can select electronic as i said motorized walls and the level transmitters are also an alternative available transmitters can be used on a high pressure receiver also and the low pressure receiver depending on your motorized walls can control the liquid flooding when you are using stop walls which is a very commonly used walls walls are used for closing and opening isolation systems uh, straight type and angle type walls are available i will always recommend to go for maximum angle type walls wherever possible particularly if you are having a straight wall and a bend go for an angle type wall because you can see here angle type walls normally have a higher kv factor than the uh, your straight wall it means the pressure drop across the stop wall in angle type wall is less as compared to the straight wall for the same size so if you are having a straight wall a bend avoid it go to the angle type wall and then you uh, save on a bend save on two joints and then you uh, have a lesser pressure drop so this this all pressure drops particularly in suction line adds to your uh, inefficiency of your system these are some of the application showing how the level control and solenoid wall is in a evaporator you have a surge drum or the accumulator the float is used to maintain constant level in the accumulator so that the coil is always flooded and the gas separation takes place in through this accumulator in a chilling system you need to have fully automation need to have make sure that your chiller is flooded and it is always maintaining a level you need to make sure that particularly water chillers are there there is anti freezing control like a temperature control back pressure so as to maintain constant evaporating pressure is maintained these are some of the flooded chiller like you have a, a phe with uh, accumulator you have a shell and tube or a phe with u tube make sure that the proper level control uh, is used so that the flooded chillers are always kept flooded so as to have your higher efficiency same is applicable in ice machine or any 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 other applications when in ice bath tanks you can you can see here the same type of level control system and then another control which serves energy is ice thickness controller ice thickness controller is used on a coils of the in the ice bath tank so that certain amount of ice is formed then the liquid filling is stopped which avoids the blockage forming blocks of ice as you know ice is a bad conductor of heat if the blocks are formed the melting becomes very difficult so you always go for the, this kind of a system next system is the liquid overfill system advantage of liquid overfill system is that you can have a multiple evaporators the dry suction from compressor to low pressure receiver is very less so you have a more more uh, lesser pressure drop in the dry suction line possibility of liquid coming to the compressor is less because you have one very big accumulator and individual evaporators don't need accumulators or surge drums implementing hot gas defrosting maintaining multiple temperatures is a very easy phenomena when you are designing ammonia pump system it has been very popular in india since 2005 6 earlier this system was considered to be a something novelty or specialty now i am very happy that all the components required for this pumping systems are available in india earlier those controls the pumps everything was being imported at very high cost now this is available this is truly a made in india what our honorable prime minister modi says this particular this system is totally made in india and be made these are just showing different uh, control arrangements for a horizontal or a vertical uh, pump recirculation systems or uh, when we are having this liquid feeding we can have a feed, feed line assembly or we can have a feed line assembly with back pressure control if you want to maintain different temperatures in the uh, uh, different chambers for with the same compressor then comes the uh, defrosting defrosting is most important automation of defrosting is very 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 important in refrigeration plant you can see in plate freezers or glass freezers or the cold storage how much this frost gets formed on the evaporator when you are operating below 0 degree centigrade the moisture in the air gets 
and gets accumulated into this evaporators because it is operating at very low temperature. So this frost has to be removed. It can be removed by water, electric, air and uh, hot gas. What it actually means is that when you talk about water defrosting, we are stopping the plant, we are pouring the water on the evaporator and let the water raise the temperature of the frost on the evaporator and then that gets melted. The disadvantage is that there is a huge requirement of this water is there and then you need longer time, maybe one hour, one and a half hour to defrost all. And secondly, the water is wasted. Next point is that the possibility of water evaporating and again getting into the air is more. So next time you uh, by the next cycle, you get a frosting formation earlier. Another is what called as an off cycle or air defrost. It means you switch off your plant, keep the doors open, keep it like that for 5-6 hours and let the uh, whatever the temperature, ambient temperature, raise in the temperature, defrost the ice. It, it requires shutting off or losing the temperature achieved in the room. Electric defrost is most popular, it was one of the most popular things because it was very easy. Just put the electrical heaters in the coil and when you don't want to defrost, you run the heaters. The disadvantage is that it requires huge electrical power and when you are talking about energy efficiency, of course saving on the electrical power is very important. Secondly, replacing those heaters if they fail of the thick hour is very difficult. Third point is that if the heater insulation fails, then possibility of generating electric shocks or through your evaporator is also there. So the what is best way is using the hot gas defrosting. In hot gas defrosting, what we do, hot gas which is available in our system, which is being condensed into the condenser, is fed to the evaporator. It's like a reverse circle. Typically, this is uh, your liquid feeding coming in and going back to your system. When you want to defrost, you shut off the liquid line, you put the hot gas, the hot gas pressure will raise and then it will defrost the evaporator and that, uh, in, the, in that process the hot gas becomes liquid, so you drain that liquid out. So this, this can be done using a pump suite or gravity feed system or in uh, overfeed system also efficiently. So hot gas defrosting saves a lot of energy. In my experience, I have seen that plant which was shut off by using water or electric defrosting for one hour, or one hour, one and a half hour, has been defrosted in 10 to 15 minutes. And again, using using the energy which is available in the plant. So there is no external energy required. What it needs is only some controls, additional controls, and then you achieve a lot. Next part is as uh, Dr. Kadam told us about either. Uh, removal, purging of air and uh, water in ammonia. So what happens this here is that uh, the air or what we call as the actual pressure uh, or pressure is additive. What it means that the pressure of ammonia and pressure of air gets added. So if you have, if you have, a, if you have a refrigerant plant designed to operate at say 13.5 kg or 36 degrees centigrade ambient temperature, and you have a 2 kg of air, your, your plant pressure or discharge pressure or the condenser pressure becomes 15.5 kg. So that 15.5 kg pressure, so actual pressure is P refrigerant plus P non-condensable pressure. So the actual, uh, because of this air pressure which is added into the, your ammonia, makes your compressor work more. Ultimately, your compressor power is nothing between the this ratio of your discharge pressure divided by suction pressure. The more and more your compressor has to go for higher pressure, you consume more power. So, what happens is with that air naturally increases your power demand because your compressor is doing more work. And because of the uh, air presence into the system, your efficient efficiency decreases because your compressor is spending time and energy on compressing air rather than ammonia. Overall system efficiency decreases and then excess pressure also puts strains on the bearings, drives of the compressor. Compressor for failures are more spare part consumption is high and also leads to the, uh, because of higher temperature your compressor parts may damage or it will also lead to the scanning of condenser because you are operating at higher temperature. The more the temperature, the 
scanning is more, uh, the scanning system requirement, cost is required. You can see typically shell and tube condenser. Uh, you can have an air accumulated at the outside of the uh, your water and this is your ammonia. So when this air is accumulated in this uh, side, uh, on, the outside, on the surface of the tubes, so between water and ammonia, the air forms an insulation, insulated uh, wall. So this, 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 this really uh, insulation makes your condenser perform and uh, poorly perform or increase the uh, energy requirement in the condenser. You, you can see evaporative condenser also, the air gets formed onto the outside of the uh, your refrigerant. So naturally, uh, this is your air. So naturally your uh, heat transfer capacity of the condenser reduces. Typically, what, what, how much can I have a power loss? If I have only 0.5% air, I, my power loss is 0.8%. If I have a 4% air, my power, my power cost is 6.5%. So, if you, when you are talking about larger plants, about uh, bigger plants, you have to look at the costing of this. So, what it should be done is, you should go for an automatic purging. Because even if you do the manual purging, it will be done once in a while. And by the time your next purging cycle is there, when you are not purging, then your pressures are going to increase and then you are going to pay money for this uh, area till you do the next purging. But if you go to the automatic purging, it will remove air continuously and definitely saves on your uh, refrigeration plant efficiency. And you get better and uh, higher efficiency. Typically, fully automatic purges are available. So it can be installed in your plant. What is most critical when you are installing a purger system is that your purging points must be taken correctly. In an evaporative condenser, you must be taking it from the outlet of the condenser. Normal manual purging points are provided at the inlet of the condenser. Do not connect purgers to the inlet of the condenser. Because this is the area where you have highest, highest quantity of ammonia coming in. If you see the compressor discharge coming in is, is a gas, air is also gas. So here if you have a 5% air, 95% is ammonia. So in online condition, when plant is running, you try to open this wall, what we will get is ammonia. But if you look at the end of the condenser, theoretically all my 95% ammonia must be condensed and become liquid. So what is left at the top is only air or non-condensable gases. If I take this purging point from the outlet of the condenser, I possibility of air removal or getting higher efficiency from the purger is more. Same is when you are talking about receivers, there is a liquid inlet uh, to the receiver. Make sure that you have the purging point furthest away from the liquid uh, inlet, not very close to the liquid inlet because this may, when this wall is there, possibility of ammonia gas liquid coming here is more. If you look at end to end, all the liquid gets saturated and only the uh, non-condensable gases will accumulate at the end. So this, these things you need to look and make sure that you are properly installed. Let me show PHG condenser and this is a purge point. This is for evaporative condenser, you have a purge point here. And for an atmospheric condenser, this is a purge point in the common header. These are the typical drawings of when you are having pump overfit system, you can take multiple purge points to a purger and it keeps on operating all these purge points and removes the air automatically. Same can be achieved into the uh, gravity free system. This is the result of an ice cream plant where discharge pressure from 16 kg has been brought down to 12 kg. And this is a gravity free system and this is what their saving is. Uh, around 8 lakh rupees in a year for power cost of 7.5 rupees when that project was implemented. Now the power cost has gone to 9 rupees. And this does not include the saving into the saving, saving done by achieving better refrigeration capacity, lowering the operating time, increasing the, uh, getting lower temperatures and uh, reducing the compressor running time, reducing the compressor maintenance. That all cost is not added. This is only the cost of air removal. This is actual case study. This, uh, since this is a, a presentation on energy saving, I am just sharing these slides. This is a case study of a freezing plant for a minus 40 degree evaporating when you are having an IPF system of 500 kilowatts. This is what the saving was achieved. This is a four years old story. We are talking about 6 rupees power. 
And in potato cold storage also, you can achieve a very high efficiency even though the potato cold storage operates at higher temperatures or the above zero degree centigrade uh, temperature, still there is possibility of energy saving. Next point is like water contamination or effects of water in ammonia. Uh, Dr. Kadam told us about what happens is when ammonia is mixed with the, uh, sorry, the water is mixed with the oil. I am going to talk more about what happens is when water mixed with the ammonia as a refrigerant. First thing is that ammonia has a very high affinity for uh, water to get accumulated and then uh, at say 30 degrees centigrade you can have a 30 percent of ammonia uh, added into the water. But if you have a minus at 0 degree you can get 46 percent and at minus 33 degree you can have 100 percent ammonia added into the water. So if you are operating a freezing plant, low temperature cold storage or a glass filler, possibility of having 100% water in ammonia is there. So what happens when I have ammonia? What difference it makes? Even uh, many times I have seen we are getting ammonia with water. So what happens is here is that all the pressure temperature relations or the efficient system which we talked about is based on a pressure temperature relation. When you have a 0% dilution, at minus 0.3 kg per centimeter square gauge pressure, you will get minus 40 degree. But if I have a 20 percent water in my refrigeration plant, then instead of getting minus 40, I am going to get only minus 36 degrees centigrade. So my refrigeration plant running at the same suction pressure, same discharge pressure, I am not going to get minus 40. It means that to get this minus 40, I either have to operate at lower suction pressure. When I go for a lower suction pressure, my compressor efficiency is going to reduce. So I may have to add one more compressor. Or I will increase the refrigeration plant capacity to get minus 40. Or I am compromising on the temperature required. Which may affect freezing of my plant or uh, processing whatever I am doing. So what it can do is that we have an ammonia dehydration system. It can remove the uh, water, oil, dirt from your plant automatically separates them out and you get fresh ammonia. In typical this kind of a system, the, when you have a high pressure liquid going into the low pressure, it is circulated through this dehydrator. This high pressure liquid works as a heat source and the low temperature liquids from the pump vessel or the evaporators are taken and brought in into contact with this uh, uh, coil which is containing uh, this high temperature receiver. Whatever the ammonia is there, it will evaporate and it will go back to the system and whatever the oil is there or the water is there, it will accumulate at the bottom of the system. It can be drained uh, drain automatically. This, uh, this is typically energy savings observed in a uh, freezing plant which is operating at when you have a high stage booster system. Uh, this is what the saving was after in the one year. And that's again saying these are all four five year stories. So uh, because of the COVID latest results were not very easily obtainable. This is six rupees. Power it is saving around 3.6 uh, lakh rupees in a year. Yes, sir. How this water is drained? Because at uh, normal temperature also the water and ammonia is uh, very much miscible. So what that is what it is being done, sir. What this uh, uh, dehydrator does, it separates out ammonia and water. But how does it separate? We, that's what it is. We have a, we, this uh, high pressure liquid is. Uh, we, uh, circulated through this dehydrator which is, in, which is in the form of a coil. So it works as a heat source. See water uh, is removed by, uh, water is separated from ammonia by evaporation of ammonia. See in, like we have seen in uh, air pressure, we are what we are doing actually is we are condensing. Power gases we are trying to condense. So if there is ammonia, it will uh, become liquid and if it is a uh, uh, foul gas, it will be vented out. In uh, water side, water normally, water has a very low uh, uh, pressure as compared to ammonia. So water will, will always accumulate onto the uh, evaporator side. So what we are doing here is bringing ammonia from evaporator side, like a two pump vessel outlet or uh, two uh, DX systems or chillers from the bottom of the chiller. And then what this dehydrator will do? If there is ammonia, it will evaporate and the ammonia will go into the system and the gas and whatever the oil is there, it will get accumulated at the bottom. So in normal condition, 
uh, if you see this dehydrator, this bottom position, then it will be frosting on it when there is ammonia. And when it starts filling up with the water or oil, the frosting will go. Then there is a drain wall available by which you can drain automatically. Okay, and how the uh, ammonia will be evaporated? Because this line goes directly to the receiver. No, sir, if you, that's what I'm saying. The receiver, that's the design of this unit. That the, the receiver liquid is coming through this coil and is going back into the system. So that receiver, which is receiver liquid, which is work as 38 degrees centigrade, it will work as a heat source. Heat source to evaporate the ammonia. No, but ultimately the uh, ammonia which has been evaporated is again going back to the receiver, na? No, it is going back to pump, sir. Not receiver. It cannot go back to the receiver, sir. Because it is evaporated, it is at lower, lower pressure. It is going back to low pressure receiver. Or uh, your, uh, in, in case of a gravity system, it will go back to your accumulator of your chiller. So this is gas. And what is left out at the bottom is uh, liquid water or oil. This is how typical savings are for calculated and uh, all actual, these are all actual for site results. Next part is of compressor automation. You uh, implement uh, compressor automation by using independent controllers, dedicated digital compressor controllers or PLC systems. What we are here to do is depending on a suction pressure or your chiller temperature, you load and load the compressors. It saves a lot of energy. If you go for a PLC system, you can do a lot more, have more data recorded, data stored into your plant, and then you can have uh, more functions. Now, of course, it's cost, but it saves a lot of energy. So, automation. Now, uh, a very simple question. Many times I've been asked, just by putting an electronic controller on a PLC, can I save the energy? No. Unless you have those, like I said, the control system is a complete loop or a closed loop system, you have a sensing device, you have a controlling device and you have to final actuator in the field. So when all the three are there, then only you save the energy, when all three work. This is, this is typically a CO2 plant. This is a complete transcritical CO2 refrigeration system designed for a cold storage to operate at minus 25 degrees centigrade. Here you can see this with PLC, different, all the temperatures, evaporating temperature, room temperature, Defrosting on and off, everything is shown in a one single shot. So you can implement automation as much as it is possible. But compressor automation saves a lot of energy. These are again some of the case studies. This particularly, this, this was a compressor used for uh, 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 air conditioning in a meat processing plant for uh, process hall chilling and everything. This data is uh, shared with me by this, uh, Mr. Goranikar of Dactech, which is he has observed. Similarly, for uh, also uh, glass freezer plants, uh, cold storage plants, which was operating at minus 30, supposed to operate at minus 30, but operating at minus 37, after implementation compressor uh, capacity control, started operating at minus 30. This is what the saving achieved. These are very recent results, just completed six months back. Next point is BF, BFDs or variable frequency drives. Variable frequency drives have become very, very popular nowadays by uh, the advantages of various frequency drives. One is that it gives us a soft start function, so the kicks of the motors are avoided. Second one is the, uh, what is a variable frequency drive? If you see the RPM of a uh, motor is related by formula 120F upon P. P is number of poles which is normally fixed. So by varying F or the frequency of the uh, your uh, supply, you can vary the speed of the motor. And this variable speed gives you your compressor variable because of the change in the compressor RPM, your compressor capacities, uh, it's changed or it is uh, uh, increased or reduced based on your requirement and you can achieve a lot of energy saving. So one energy saving achieved by soft start function and another is by the varying the frequency. So when I want to implement VFD in my plant, should I my, should my all compressors be connected with VFD? You need to study because in your plant you may be having one compressor constantly running and one variable load. 
so you can implement EBFD only on one compressor which has got a variable capacity. Secondly, is my compressor suitable for or my system is suitable for if my compressor is operating at 800 RPM and it cannot be brought down below 500 RPM because my oil pump will not work or oil failure is there, then there is no uh, use of using VFD. The compressor may be provided with the solenoid walls to load and unload and you can use that for better and much lower cost. Secondly, is my compressor capable of going for higher RPM? Some of the compressors are available which can grow at 1800 RPM. So typically, by using the same compressor which was selected for 800 RPM, I can go to 1500 RPM and achieve more energy or more repression capacity from this. So compressor capacity, compressor compatibility needs to be checked. And overall, what is my, what is my, suppose I am operating around 800 to 500. So what is the energy set I am going to achieve? And is it worth with my investment of VFD? Because remember, VFDs are totally electronic devices. Their guarantee warranty, particularly for the thyristors used there at the outlet, does not have no manufacturer use. Guarantee warranty for the power devices in VFD. So and the power devices normally cost 70 to 80 percent cost of the VFD. So in case of any failures of those parts, you may have to replace the VFD. Now, when I am saying I am talking about VFD or variable frequency drive, how it works? That my uh, AC to DC voltage, the normal field supply is air that AC voltage, which is converted into DC voltage, and then this DC voltage is again converted into square waves, and then filtered to make a sine wave, and then that uh, on and off decides my frequency. So that generates a lot of harmonics. So make sure that uh, correct harmonic filters are used in your system so that the uh, VMT harmonics does not affect your other electronic or other electrical devices. Cost of these harmonics can be very high and it is itself a separate topic of presentation. Giving my time limit, I'll just wrap up in next two minutes, sir. Uh, as I was talking about energy saving, use desuperators wherever possible from discharge your, of your uh, compressor. The, Super it can be recovered and around 50 to 20 percent super it can very easily be recovered and you can generate free hot water from your plant which can be used for uh, multiple applications depending on your requirement. These are case studies of uh, using hot water for preparation for bottle warmers in uh, PepsiCo plants. Then I was talking about air to air heat recovery. You can save a lot of energy, particularly you have air changes in your cold storage systems where you are removing the uh, uh, cold air in the room and taking the fresh air. You can use it use it to uh, pre-change the fresh air coming in and uh, heat the air going out. So you are not trying to put the atmosphere uh, outside environment, but you are uh, uh, saving on the uh, chip, uh, again chilling of the uh, fresh air coming in. These are typical calculations for a potato cold storage, saves a lot of saving. Last topic which I want to talk about is calibration of equipments is used into your system or your plant. Make sure that all the instruments, equipments, gauges, everything you use are regularly calibrated and regularly maintained. Because any deviation, any failure in these instruments is directly affecting your energy performance. This is an example which I found out. This is a pressure gauge. You can see it is not connected anywhere, but it is show, still showing some pressure. So to make sure that your all equipment gauges are daily, daily and regularly calibrated, and it is uh, maintained. Data is maintained continuously. This is a small case study which was done by one of our customers. I presented this case study into. Uh, that uh, NH40, NH23 conference in Bangkok. Uh, there was a great pre-coding cold storage in, uh, near, uh, in Maharashtra, which was initially used in uh, R22 system air cooled. And then they were having a lot of problems. The customer found that the temperature and humidity was not maintained. Rejection rate of the product was very high. Capacity was not able to achieve. The refrigerant cost itself is, was very, very high and they were consuming a lot of power. They wanted to go for expansion, but they were not able to 
uh, expand because this was all consuming their money to the power and the refrigerant cost and they were not able to compete with their competitors. So when they have changed this from, uh, if you see they increase this refrigerant capacity, they changed to uh, ammonia plant and then they gone for an evaporative condenser instead of uh, air cooled freon condensers, gone for open net piston compressors, evaporators were replaced with stainless steel tubes, uh, stainless steel evaporators, ammonia refrigeration system was used. Initial charge of ammonia was 1000 kg and yearly top up was 100 kg. So cold room temperatures 0 degree 95 because it is a grape filling unit. This is very critical to have a 95% RH. Processing time was uh, from 24 hours, it has brought down to 8 hours. And then they were able to have two batches in the same freezer instead of having one in a day. If you consider what could be the net benefit. And so what they have saved, their actual power saved is around 72 kilowatts per day. And then they are saving and there is increase in capacity. The total saving is huge. I am not able to read the figures. And then there was a sale of scrap of all those R22 equipment. It also generated certain money, new project investment and overall payback period was two and a half years. Oh, yeah. So uh, ammonia plant normally we consider designed for 15-20 years of operation. You just see how much money they have saved and how much the money they could have saved by not running the ammonia, not going for ammonia initially. So uh, I say is go for ammonia, it's most natural, most energy efficient refrigerant. And nowadays because you guys are mainly from Ishray, in Ishray everybody talks about green building and green and green. Please remember ammonia refrigeration technology was always green right from the day one. We don't need green building certification. We have the best, we have the best efficient type of system, best refrigerant, highest energy energy refrigeration. We are not heating air by using air cooled condensers. We have the best technology of evaporative condensers available. Our ammonia circulation ratio is far better than any air cooled systems. Most of the ammonia as a refrigerant is very less. And overall, we were green, we are green, and we are going to remain green. Please, you air conditioning guys need to learn what is green and switch over to the green refrigerants. Thank you very much.